So what do you do when you have too many printers and not enough space? You build a 3D printer bay. And that's what we're gonna be talking about on today's Makers Mashup. Welcome makers. So I am out of space in the shop and I really needed to spend some time getting things organized here. And I have kicked off a new project, which is building a 3D printer bay. Now I'm going to trick this thing out and make it really cool. So it's going to happen over the next following weeks. And I've really got a good start on it already. I managed to put together a industrial shelving unit and I've got power running to it. But what we're going to be covering today is my Octoprint setup for it because this machine that you've seen in the last couple videos over here hanging on the wall is actually powering six different Octoprint instances and it handles running all of those printers simultaneously with no problem at all. But even better than that, what we're going to be covering today is how I started to get some of these home automation set up. And what I've got is Octoprint, when it completes a print, announce that a 3D print is complete and allows me to get back to my 3D printer, clear that print off, and start another one. So I don't want to waste any more time. We've got a lot to cover today. So with all that said, let's get to work. I've logged into my master Linux box and this runs six Octoprint instances now. And we'll start by creating a new user and we're going to call this Octo5. I do use the same login and password on each one of these instances. It does make it a little less confusing. Once I have the user configured here, we're going to log in as root by just doing a sudo su. Not the best practice, but it works really well for doing the installation. We'll then navigate to the home Octo5 directory, and we're going to follow basically the directions on the Octoprint installation page for a manual installation. This starts by using Python 3 to create the virtual environment. Then once that's created, we will just call the Octoprint uh, pip installer and ask it to install Octoprint. This takes a few minutes, but once it's done, the next step is going to be to change all of the permissions because I installed this with root, change all the permissions over to the Octo5 user. We do this by simply entering a change ownership command and make sure that you use the recursive function so that way it changes all the files in those subdirectories. The last step to get everything running is to modify the cron tab and add an entry so Octoprint starts at boot. Eventually I'll replace these with services, but for now it's much easier to just reboot the machine. I don't change Octoprint that often, so an occasional reboot here and there doesn't represent many issues for me. Now, I've got these spaced 50 ports apart, so the next one in line here is going to be 5200, and we'll enter 5200, and then also make sure you update the user on the left to be Octo5. Once that's done, we just need to save and reboot the machine. If everything's set up correctly, you should be able to hit port 5200 in my case, and as you can see, I just need to set up Octoprint. So let's fast forward to the end of this install. Once we're done with our install, we only need to install one plugin, and that is Home Assistant Discovery. After that, I'm going to reboot this box and we'll pick up from Home Assistant. Now, I've got a number of different dashboards already set up here, but what is important is going down to the notifications, you should see that there are new devices discovered, and indeed, we have a new Octoprint printer. So if you click configure on this, you're going to enter your username in here. And this is just going to be my RWMEC username. It already knows the host and the port. Um, I'm not using SSL, so there's no need to verify it. And once you click submit, it will discover Octoprint. And then you're able to go over to the Octoprint instance. And just like you might do for Cura, you can allow access to that instance. 
Now, once that is done, you can switch back to this tab and you'll see here that it's created the configuration. And uh, this one is in printer bay one. All right, so under devices, you can see there's a multiple Octoprint instances here. And uh, this one here is the new one that we just set up. And if you're ever curious by which Octoprint instance you're looking for, uh, this here, if I hover over this, you'll see down here. But if you just click this, it will open a new tab to the actual Octoprint instance. And you can see up the top, we're at 5200, which is the one we just set up. Now, immediately you've already got these controls in here. And uh, if you add MQTT integration, you can get a whole bunch more. I'm not gonna really cover that in here because just the discovery plugin gives us everything we need uh, for any automations that we're going to be doing today. So now that we have this Octoprint instance set up, what we're going to do is rename everything now. It's much better to rename your Octoprint instance before you start creating scenes and automations. So we're just gonna modify this and we're gonna call this the Octoprint. I've got multiple Ender 3 printers. We're gonna call this one Octoprint Ender 3.2. And once you've got this done, you'll be prompted here. Uh, do I want to rename all of the entity ideas? You always want to do this. What I'm doing is changing this entity's name. And this goes through all of the scripts to update that. So once that's done, I now have a name that is a bit more understandable uh, on this page. And we can easily now find our printer. Now, the easiest way to add this sort of information to a particular dashboard is to just click these Add to Dashboard buttons. I find that adding it to the dashboard and then using these to edit the dashboard later is the easiest way to go. Um, we'll just add this to the dashboard and we'll add this one to the dashboard of the lab. From there, we can customize these any way we want you will see that we have down here our Octoprint Enter 3.2, the current state unavailable because we haven't turned on the printer and connected it. All this information is pretty basic, but gives you complete control to run all the rest of these automations. All right, so the wiki page here gives us all of the information that we need in order to modify the automations YAML. But what I'm going to do is walk you through how to modify this and create this with the visual editor, which is what most new people will want to do. So from within Home Assistant, the first thing we're going to do is go to the automations and scenes. And you can see I've got a ton set up for my machine. So we'll create a new automation and we'll just start with an empty one. You can see up here at the top, it gives you the new automation, triggers, conditions, and actions. Uh, first, we're gonna name this for our test automation for YouTube video. And the mode is generally single. Uh, I won't go into the details of this, but essentially single is what you want most of the time. Now for our triggers, if we go back to our wiki guide, you'll see here that I am triggering on uh, an Octoprint job percentage, and there's a device ID. Now, doing this through the interface will allow you to easily get both of these pieces of information. So if we go back to our device, we're going to look for our new Octoprint instance. And there we go. It's the device of an Octoprint Ender 3-2. And the first trigger that it has here is when the job percentage uh, value changes. So if it's above 99, then uh, we will take action. Now, where I get a lot of the YAML code that's here is available in this visual interface as well. If you click the three dots there and then click Edit in YAML, uh, you'll see this same information matches this same sort of information here for the trigger of this recipe. So pretty easy to follow. Uh, you can either look at it from a code perspective uh, or the visual editor here really allows you to do this in here and walk you through the process. 
So we'll go back to our recipe here and we can see we have no conditions. So we'll skip that. And then the next step is super simple. It's a matter of sending information to um, one of the media players in my home. In this particular case, I have an office display and that is a Google Home display. And what I'm gonna do is have the text-to-speech service send the message that that printer is complete. So what we'll do here is we'll go down to the uh, device section here and we're gonna call service. And then the service we're gonna use, we can just type TTS in here. And there's two different ones. Um, there's a cloud one or Google Translate one. I prefer the cloud one. I just think the voice sounds a little bit better. So if we go back to our recipe over here, we'll be able to see um, that the only two things we configured was the entity ID, which uh, we need to select the device that we're going to be playing on. And that entity ID is gonna be my office display. And then the message is that this print is complete. So we'll just type in here. So the Ender 3 number two has completed printing. So now that we've got all this set up, we just click save and that's it. We're ready to go. Uh, as this printer gets to 99%, it will then call this service. Now it's easy to test this out. You can just run this action and this will trigger in my office here. The Ender 3 number two has completed printing. So you can see doing this through the visual editor is pretty simple and we're able to call that. Now, the only thing that we would have left to do here would be to actually start a print. And then once it gets to 99%, uh, it will go ahead and trigger that notification on any of those devices. So that's the first one we're gonna cover today is really just being able to notify at 99%. So I was really pleased with how this has been coming together so far. I've got one Octoprint that is running everything. Uh, it really gives me the ability to turn power on and off on printers. But what's really cool is I get those Google announcements across the home whenever a 3D print finishes. And in the coming weeks, we're gonna be covering how I did some of the power management and being able to start to monitor, even on a printer level, how much power I'm using for print to print. Now, that might not be important to everybody. You may only have one printer, but a lot of the techniques that I'm showing you in these coming videos, you'll be able to apply to one printer or to 10 printers. So with that is gonna be the end of today's video. If you liked it, make sure you mash that like button and don't forget to share and subscribe because you're not gonna to wanna to miss any of these upcoming videos. So with that, I wanna say thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time. In one of the upcoming videos, I'm gonna be covering how I did this vase mode print which acts as a facade to the steel structure of the printer bay. And what's really cool is these print in a relatively quick amount of time and give a little bit of a sci-fi look. I didn't wanna waste any space of the enclosure, so on the sides here, what I've done is I've already put up some of the parts bins that I had on some of the walls over here. So I'm able to use a lot of different space and I'll be working on making this a little bit of a cleaner look. Now you may be wondering what that white is on the background, that is foam core. And that will be very helpful in giving it a little bit more of a facade look, but then also allowing me to really enclose the unit and give it a little bit of a better look.